Copy and Bill ask uh, hitter or swingers release. Well, I'm a hitter. I use a hitter's release. I was a swinger. I don't use a swinger's release. Um, first, what is the difference? Well, I mean, I've, I've covered this many, many times uh, throughout the videos here on YouTube and on the advanced ball striking site. There's tons and tons and hours and stuff on this. But basically, what we're dealing with uh, as far as hitting versus swinging, just real quick, a swinger is using timing a steady even acceleration coming down and getting the club face to just literally release early the shaft straightens and the club face is going to be rotating into the strike without really any pressure on the right side of the club that starts coming down and the swingers release uh, everything is very relaxed and loose and oily the right arm is going to be relaxed and it's going to allow to straighten which is going to roll the club face over through the strike. So you're bringing all this timing element into the swing. Okay, that's a swinger's release. Can you hit a ball like that? Yeah, you can, absolutely. And uh, have, have players won tournaments with that? Absolutely. Uh, VJ Singh, perfect example of a swinger's release. Jack Nicholas uses swinger's release. So yes, it can be done. Um, personal preference, I, I suppose, but I've done both and I think a, if you knew how to do a hitter's release, you'd never go back to swinger's release because you can feel the club uh, more. If you're hitting, you're, you're not just hitting it with a momentum strike, meaning momentum versus acceleration. So the physics of that would be uh, F equals MA, a force strike, a force equals mass of the club times acceleration. Um, and the uh, swinging release would be P equals MV, uh, momentum P, mass times velocity. So we're not, we're, in other words, I'm just simplifying this, but basically the, the club is not accelerating into the strike. It's reached maximum acceleration prior to impact, probably around uh, the third parallel, first parallel, second parallel, third parallel from here. As soon as the club shaft, the stress on the shaft releases, as soon as that 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 stress releases, okay, there's no lo the club is no longer accelerating. That's it. Acceleration ends when the shaft, the loaded shaft releases. Now, a hitter is going to take that loaded shaft and keep that load all the way through the strike, which puts great pressure into the right hand. If, if I were to take this club and press into the ground, you can see I flex that back. Well, I feel a tremendous amount of pressure in the right hand. I can feel exactly where that blade is, and I'm accelerating the club. Better for off-centered hits. I got a firm grip. I'm accelerating the club. I hit it out on the toe. Ball doesn't care. The ball doesn't really care whether it's getting hit here, 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 here. You don't need cavity back irons or any of that, any of that kind of thing. If you have a good hitter swing, good hitter's release, actually you're just widening up your sweet spot you just hit it anywhere on the face you're gonna hit a good shot when you're when you've lost that pressure and the shaft is released you hit it out on the toe um, you get a lot of deflection the uh, club face can open at impact the ball goes way off to the right uh, much better for uh, impact dynamics with a hitter's release there, there's no real advantages to a swingers release that I that I can see I've done both I've won tournaments with both would never go back never ever ever go back to swingers release knowing what I know would never do it. Um, so the hitter's release, would, we're basically looking at the club face is, is going to be open. We're going to come into the ball. We're going to square it up. The hands are going to move left and around the body, and the club face is going to stay looking at that target here. I'm going to be accelerating the club, keeping pressure on the shaft around here, using my body to finish it off. So. In my opinion, much better to use a hitter's release if done properly. Now, you're dealing with strength and uh, flexibility and training. And this is what we do at Advanced Ball Striking class. We teach people how to hit and we give them drills. And they work on this stuff for months and months and months, a couple years. Strength, 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 work. But what do you get at the end? Ball control. And then ultimately we teach you how to draw and fade the ball in a much more sophisticated way where you don't have to change anything at a dress, nothing at the top of the backswing, nothing on the downswing. Everything is done through post-impact intentions, 
where you can get a little five yard fade, five yard draw, and you just do it easily. Greats make it look easy, because for them it's easy, because they have good technique. I say go with the hitter's release.